you stand before me as though it were only yesterday. This is the first time we've ever played a part in four films. So I think just through doing it, you things automatically grow, change, become, I can say second nature. But now I feel I've got a, a person there, a, a way of moving, speaking, thinking, feeling. My one. I always thought that Voldemort ought to look like a devil sick with sin. He wanted world domination, and he was prepared simply to sacrifice any part of humanity in himself. Mike was very keen to explore the unexpected mood swings of Voldemort. So there are moments when the sort of anger spits out at him at Harry, and other moments when it can be very silky and smooth and almost, almost pleasant. How lies have fed your legend, Harry. You have to believe him as being the ultimate evil, the ultimate bad guy. He's really quite terrifying. The enemies doesn't quite do their relationship justice. Three, two, one, action! What I wanted to try and achieve with Ray was this vulnerability in this evil monster. We know he hates Harry, but what, what is his backstory as the young Tom Riddle? In all the years Tom's been here, he's never once had a family visitor. He's a rejected child, and that can be the place where sort of hatred and anger and jealousy festers. There's a deep rage in Voldemort against the world. Severus, I was beginning to worry you had lost your way. Come, we've saved you a seat. In the first part of the, the seventh, he's the most composed and the most in control we've ever seen him. He's at the peak of his power, about to grasp victory and defeat Hogwarts um, and Harry Potter. My lord, I'd like to volunteer myself for this task. I must be the one to kill Harry Potter. Voldemort feels incredibly strong, but then he discovers that Harry's been hunting Horcruxes, so Harry, he suddenly realizes that for the first time we've ever seen him, he's particularly vulnerable. I believe you. <laughs> And there's this journey that he takes through the film where he starts to fragment. There's more extremes of emotion and rage and distress. Something essential is being ripped out of you every time Harry and his friends destroy these Horcruxes. So there's, you know, he's a man who's in the last part of the story, he's diminished, he's sort of imploded. It's a really interesting journey for his character because he's going from somebody who is kind of very stable and kind of in control and and evil and, and malevolent but nonetheless steady and as harry starts destroying parts of his soul he starts slowly kind of losing his mind as well by the end of the second part he's almost totally lost his mind